We're joined now by CBS News national security contributor, Samantha Vinograd, formerly the Assistant Secretary of Counterterrorism at Homeland Security, and she served on the National Security Council in the Obama administration. Great to have you back, Sam. Good to see you. So we're talking about decisions that have to be made at the top of the Israeli government right now. The United States and Israel are still lockstep on defense matters, but we know there's this rift uh, in terms of the choices the prime minister has been making lately. Um, there are sources that I speak to within the Biden administration who are concerned about the decision-making Netanyahu is taking on, and sources in the region who say there's a political benefit to war. Did Iran just throw Benjamin Netanyahu a lifeline at a time he's politically embattled at home? Well, I think that when we take a step back and look at how Israel views the threat of Iran, this is an existential threat to the state of Israel, and we cannot forget that. That said, having worked closely with the government of Israel while at the White House, it is true that Benjamin Netanyahu, for a long time, has been staking his political dominance on existential threats to Israel and needing to remain in power. So I do think that the attack against Israel last night will give Benjamin Netanyahu more to hold on to. It is also true, Margaret, that at a moment of such uncertainty for the state of Israel, political paralysis that would arise from early elections, which Netanyahu's largest rival, Benny Gantz, called for, that early elections would create a state of political uncertainty at a time when all resources from Benjamin Netanyahu on down do need to be focused on countering Iran. Gantz has said those would be in September. So early, but not in the middle of the war, essentially. But we'll see what happens and how many wars exist, potentially, right, in the coming months. This, this is so on edge. I know that in our own polling, we see that half of this country believes the threat of terrorism will increase, not just for Israel, but also for the U.S., because of this ongoing Israeli war with Hamas in Gaza. The FBI director testified this week, saying the number of investigations have escalated since October 7th. These are self-radicalized people. How should Americans at home understand this threat domestically? Well, let's keep in mind, what happens overseas often doesn't stay overseas. From a counterterrorism perspective, I was in the room after October 7th. I can tell you that the administration has been deeply focused on really ensuring two things. One, that foreign terrorists don't seek to travel to the homeland to inflict damage here. But more importantly, we know, factually speaking, that terrorist groups in Iran, who is the largest state sponsor of terror in the world, uses these kinds of high-profile events like what we saw last night as mass marketing opportunities. Iran's attack against Israel is a mass marketing opportunity from Iran and its proxies to try to radicalize supporters. We know that terrorist organizations have been using the Israel-Hamas conflict to try to inspire supporters and operatives all around the world to act primarily against places of worship, entities believed to be associated with the state of Israel. And that's why I don't believe that there is a homeland security nexus to what unfolded last night mm -hmm. in the homeland at this time, based on the sources that I've been speaking with. However, out of an abundance of caution, the federal government, state and local partners are taking every step possible to ensure that nothing reverberates here. We saw the Homeland Security Advisor in the meeting with the president, Secretary Blinken, Secretary Austin, and others last night. We have seen the uh, at New York Police Department, L.A. Police Department, and others indicate that they are increasing patrols mm -hmm. around places of worship. And what we need right now is for law enforcement and intelligence partners to remain vigilant and for members of the community to speak up if they see anything suspicious because the biggest international terrorism threat facing the homeland right now is individuals inspired by what they're seeing overseas to action. And we know, I mean, the director of national intelligence has testified that the Israeli war in Gaza will have a generational impact, potentially on terrorism. And we're seeing in our polling support for Israel's war there dropping. How concerned are your former colleagues that Israel is losing strategically the fight and becoming more isolated? From a counterterrorism perspective, it is a fact that what is happening in Gaza is being used again as a mass marketing opportunity, not only because the suffering is 
incredibly difficult for anyone to watch. Hamas and other Iranian proxies are using those images to try to rally support against Israel, whether it be here in the homeland or more broadly across the world. I think the biggest concern right now is ensuring that Israel has what it needs to deter Iran, not just today, but going forward. And so when we think about what Israel's next move is going to be, we also have to think about what the international community is going to do yeah. to ensure that Iran loses the funding to, for its ballistic and cruise missile program and tries to take a, or takes a step yeah. back from funding terrorism around the world. We'll see what that international response is at the UN and elsewhere. Sam, thank you very much yes. for your analysis.